In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Greetings, dearly beloved in Christ. I welcome you to this Eucharistic celebration on the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, coming from St. Dominic's Catholic Church on Royal Roots Television. Today, the Lord calls us to persevere in prayer. To persevere in prayer is to come to God in faith. To come to God in faith is to trust him. Dearly beloved, at this Mass, we shall be praying for the gifts of perseverance, faith, and trust. To be able to celebrate this Mass worthily, let us pause for a while, remembering those moments we have failed to persevere, those moments we have failed to trust, those moments we have failed to be men and women of faith. For the times we have failed in these areas, for the times we have sinned against God by virtue of our thoughts, words, and actions, let us ask for pardon and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Let us bring our personal intentions before the Lord, who is capable of answering our needs. Almighty ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Amalekites came and attacked Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Pick out men for yourself, and tomorrow morning march out to engage Amalek. I, meanwhile, will stand on the hilltop, the staff of God in my hand. Joshua did as Moses told him and marched out to engage Amalek, while Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. As long as Moses had kept his arms raised, Israel had the advantage. When he let his arms fall, the advantage went to Amalek. But Moses' arms grew heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him. And on this he sat, Aaron and Hur supporting his arms, one on one side, one on the other, and his arms remained firm till sunset. With the edge of the sword, Joshua cut down Amalek and his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you. 
a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. You must keep to what you have been taught and know to be true. Remember who your teachers were and how, ever since you were a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. From these, you can learn the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and can profitably be used for teaching, for refuting error, for guiding people's lives and teaching them to be holy. This is how the man who is dedicated to God becomes fully equipped and ready for any good work. Before God and before Christ Jesus, who is to be judge of the living and the dead, I put this duty to you in the name of his appearing and of his kingdom. Proclaim the message and welcome or unwelcome, insist on it. Refute falsehood correct error, call to obedience, but do all with patience and with the intention of teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the need to pray continually and never lose heart. There was a judge in a certain town, he said, who had neither fear of God nor respect for man. In the same town, there was a widow who kept on coming to him and saying, I want justice from you against my enemy. For a long time, he refused. But at last, he said to himself, Maybe I have neither fear of God nor respect for man. But since she keeps pestering me, I must give this widow her just rights or she will persist in coming and worrying me to death. And the Lord said, you notice what the unjust judge has to say? Now will not God see justice done to his chosen who cry to him day and night, even when he delays to help them, I promise you, he will see justice done to them and done speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find any faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Dearly beloved in Christ, on this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, a salient point I would want to concentrate on here is the very last verse of this Gospel reading. Verse 8 of Luke chapter 18. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Indeed, we see here that this widow persevered in asking that justice be done against her enemy. Again, it's very important we Notice that she was demanding that which was due to her, justice. And that is what the definition of justice is. Giving to the other that which is due to him or her. So in this definition, St. Thomas Aquinas makes us understand that that which is regarded as justice is that which is due to the person as opposed to or different from charity, that which is not due to the person but can be given magnanimously. So when I give to you that which is due to you, that's justice. But when I give to you that which is not due to you but out of my magnanimity, that is charity. So we see that that which this widow demanded was that which was due to her. And Jesus is making us understand that when we persevere in prayer, that which is due to us will be granted us. For he says, I promise you he will see justice done to them and done speedily. And this is where we need to be very careful. It is good to say, oh, we need to persevere in prayer. It is good to say that that which we ask of will be given to us, but is that which we ask for due to us? Is it due to us in the sense of God's will and divine providence? Or are we asking of that which we think is good for us, but is not what God wants of us? Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He makes all things beautiful in his time. So there is a need for us to learn to persevere in prayer. Moses got wearied. He got tired. He couldn't persevere, but he was assisted by Aaron and Hor as Joshua fought the Amalekites. So we see here Moses interceding for the people. St. Justin Martyr, in his dialogue to Trifu, will describe Moses in that act of prayer, stretching out his arms, being a symbol of that which Christ will be to us when he raises his hand and is crucified on the cross. Moses interceded for the people. He persevered even in his getting tired. He was assisted by Or and Aaron. And for this, the people earned victory over the Amalekites. Today, dearly beloved, we are called to persevere in prayer. But to persevere will require faith. Faith to believe that the Lord is capable of doing that which we ask of. It is not a case of when it doesn't come at the time we want, we assume God has not answered our prayer, or we start shopping for answers or solutions elsewhere and outside of God. 
To persevere is also to be patient. Are we patient in prayer? Or do we get tired after a short while and assume that the Lord will not answer our prayer? Today, as we're called to persevere, we're called to faith. When the Lord comes, will he find faith on earth? Will he find men and women who have persevered, who trust, who are patient? Or will he find men who simply want that which will gratify their own desires? The faith which God demands of us also demands courage to stand up for what is right, to be guided by scripture. And so we see in our second reading, St. Paul's letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're told in verse 16 that all of scripture is inspired by God and can profitably be used for teaching, for refuting error, for guiding people's lives and teaching them to be holy. We need to express our faith according to scripture. Not according to our whims and caprices or desires, but what does sacred scripture actually teach us? To refute errors, for there are many teachings of our times which are contrary to the word of God. But these teachings have found their way among Christians. And Christians now preach all sorts of things or accommodate all sorts of things. So Christians give room for same-sex marriage. When scripture has already taught us that this is not God's will for man and woman. We need to be guided. We need to allow sacred scripture to be the light for our paths and the lamp for our feet. The word of God is inspired for teaching, for refuting, for guiding people's lives and teaching them to be holy. Yes, holiness is required for, from us as men and women of faith. We cannot say we are persevering in asking for what we want if we are not leading holy lives. And St. Paul says this is how the man who is dedicated to God becomes fully equipped and ready for any good work. To be fully equipped is to be inspired and guided by scripture. It is when we are guided by scripture that we can persevere, knowing that we're standing on the word of God, which is truth. And because it is truth, it, is, it will come to pass. Yes, indeed we shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free. May the Lord, who has called us to follow him, strengthen our faith, grant us perseverance. May we trust him. May we be guided by Holy Scripture to be holy and to be faithful witnesses. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
must pray continually and never lose heart. Our God will see justice done to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night. Encouraged by this teaching of our Lord, let us come to the Father with our intercessions. that our Pope and bishops may proclaim the message, refute falsehood, correct error, and call to obedience. We pray, O Lord. that men and women in authority will listen directly to the poor and helpless. We pray, O Lord. that judges and lawyers be guided by divine and natural law and act without favor. We pray, O Lord. that our private prayer may be simple, persistent, and regular. Let us talk to the Lord in the silence of our hearts.
we pray, O Lord. Together, let us say the prayer for Nigeria in distress. All powerful and merciful Father, you are the God of justice, love, and peace. You rule over all the nations of the earth. Power and might are in your hands, and no one can withstand you. We present our country, Nigeria, before you. We praise and thank you, for you are the source of all we have and are. We are sorry for all the sins we have committed and for the good deeds we have failed to do. In your loving forgiveness, keep us safe from the punishments we deserve. Lord, we are weighed down, not only by uncertainties, but also by moral, economic and political problems. Listen to the cries of your people who confidently turn to you. God of infinite goodness, our strength in adversity, our help in weakness, our comfort in sorrow. Be merciful to us, your people. Spare this nation, Nigeria, from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Bless us with your kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, judge of the living and the dead, accept the prayers we bring before you with the merciful compassion you revealed in the pierced heart of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. People of God, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hearts for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life and by ascending to you O father he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as we shout and we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, Given thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, Adewale Martin, Sad Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching with it to say. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we are with the blessed hope and the coming. Of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our saints, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, we you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. When the body and blood of Christ bring us to the last in life. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. After communion, I give you thanks, Holy Lord, Father Almighty, everlasting God, who has condescended to feed me a sinner, your unworthy servant, for no merits of my own, but only out of the goodness of your great mercy, with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray you that this holy communion may be to me not guilt for punishment, but a saving intercession for pardon. Let it be to me an armor of faith and a shield of goodwill. Let it be to me a casting out of vices, a driving away of all evil desires and fleshy lusts an increase of charity, patience, humility, obedience, and all virtues, a firm defense against the plots of all enemies, both seen and unseen, a perfect quieting of all motions of sin, both in my flesh and in my spirit, a firm cleaving unto you, the only and true God, and at the end of my life, a happy death. And I pray you, your compassion, to bring me a sinner to that great feast where you with your Son and the Holy Spirit are to your holy ones, true light, full satisfaction, everlasting joy, consummate pleasure, and perfect happiness. Amen. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord for this day and again and again for all he has been to us. I want to thank you, our liturgical functionaries, for being 
present every time. And as we say for our mission statement, being present in integrity. God bless you and God strengthen you. Grant you the grace of final perseverance that that promise of the Lord will be fulfilled in your life now and always through Christ our Lord. Amen. To the management and staff of Royal Roots Television, we just can't stop thanking you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for making it possible for us to reach our viewers out there who draw strength from participating in this Eucharistic celebration. For touching their lives, may the Lord touch you and meet you at your points of need through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for each one of you who join us every Sunday on Royal Roots Television, Channel 112 Go TV, thank you for being a part of this Eucharistic celebration. And indeed, may you be richly blessed through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God.